The doctor is in. Thank you so much for tuning in again. It's your pal, Dr. Sal, and today we're going to take a look at prednisone, side effects, and some solutions. So first off, a little bit of trivia about prednisone, some fun facts about it. One is it's a steroid, but it's not the type of steroid that you consider um, for bodybuilding. It's called a glucocorticosteroid, which actually acts as an anti-inflammatory in nature. Another cool thing is it's actually made in your own body. So unlike most drugs that we take or medications, this is actually naturally produced in your own body. Unlike a lot of the other stuff that will prescribe you. It's produced just above your kidneys in some little glands called the adrenals. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about prednisone, most other drugs are basically indicated for, for one use. So for example, if I prescribe you um, say sertraline, that is basically one use, it's just for mood disorders. If I prescribe you, um, say, some Advil, that's predominantly for musculoskeletal pain. Prednisone, on the other hand, is like a master of all trades. I've seen it used and used it, uh, prescribed it myself, in multiple conditions ranging from allergy problems, asthma, um, COPD or smoker's lung exacerbations, urticaria, so bad rashes, um, what else? Pulmonary fibrosis, um, MS or um, multiple sclerosis, Guillain Barre, uh, it's using some cancers for suppression of growth, uh, it's using some kidney diseases, nephropathies like nephrotic syndrome. It's also used in gastrointestinal disorders like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, uh, and it's used for joint disorders, it's used for rheumatoid, and rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and I mean the list just goes on and on. This isn't even a complete list of all the uses for it. So this is one of the most useful uh, medication drug discoveries uh, right now in medicine today. Now, that being said, despite its incredible efficacy, there's also a lot not to be liked about it in terms of side effects. So that's what we're going to go through next. Now, with the side effects, there's a spectrum of side effects, and a lot of it depends on the dose you're taking, but more importantly with prednisone is actually the duration. How long you're taking it for is actually generally, simple rule of thumb, more important than the actual dose itself. So what I'm going to do is divide side effects that you can expect and look forward to on prednisone based on immediate, so within days, as opposed to within the first month or longer. So then we're looking at a scale of months. And then for some unfortunate people with conditions like PMR, where they need to be on it for over a year, if you need to be on it for a year or longer. All right, so first off for days, uh, a lot of people will notice within the first few days of use a big increase in appetite. You get really hungry. But it's a different type of weight gain than what you get in anabolic steroids. With these, the appetite is uh, does increase weight, but it's more of a fatty type of um, growth rather than muscular. Another thing a lot of my patients will come back in is complaint of insomnia. Sometimes I can fix that by splitting the dose or instead of taking it all in the morning, split it in half and take some at night. Or in other cases, I might have to tell them, okay, we'll try some melatonin or some over-the-counter sleep aid. It's not usually severe enough for me to have to prescribe a, a drug to combat it. Now, another important one, not so much in normal people, but with people with diabetes, tend to see their sugars go up, sometimes spectacularly so, because they're already vulnerable to um, problems with sugar metabolism. So it tends to manifest really grotesquely um, in people with diabetes. They can sometimes see their sugars go from single digits to double digits within a day or two. So usually the solution to that is just to alter their diabetic medication. Or in some cases, you may have to, if the person really must be on it for one of these conditions that could be life-threatening, 
um, then sometimes they'll actually have to institute, institute um, diabetic uh, medication, at least temporarily, until they can come back off the prednisone. Um, and another thing that a lot of people notice is uh, mood changes. And not always for the bad. Sometimes it's actually like a euphoria, um, feeling a lot better. And that would kind of make sense because if you've been feeling ill with one of these things dragging it down for weeks or months and suddenly it's virtually gone, well, you would expect your mood is suddenly going to feel perked up and happy. Um, also, some people feel a lot of anxiety with it. Now, continue with the mood thing. After months of use, um, a lot of people will experience uh, depression. So within a month or longer after use. I, again, typically, I don't typically see it severe enough to have to alter treatment as a consequence of this spinoff. But I'm sure there's going to be case here or there um, that I just haven't come across. Um, some other things to look forward to with, within the first month or longer of use is um, because it's a uh, glucocorticosteroid or mineralocorticosteroid, it tends to cause fluid retention. So increase fluid. So people will notice this with their ankles swelling or their fingers getting like sausages, their face looking a little more uh, full. Uh, that's fluid retention. In addition, there's also weight gain. But the weight gain isn't, part of that is because of fluid, but the other part of it is because of this change in metabolism of sugars, it causes increased fatty deposition as well. Especially as you're on it longer, then you really start to see spectacular weight gain. And we'll go into that in a sec, but let's finish the one month or, or greater, but less than one year. Another thing that's uh, relatively not that common, but dangerous when it happens is in about 2% of patients will get stomach ulcers. And I've actually seen that before. That usually manifests with um, like gnawing pain in the pit of your stomach, um, burning, etc. Uh, a solution to that is often just to prescribe an antacid. If, the, if you can't stop the therapy of the prednisone, so the person still needs it, you can continue the prednisone, but just off, off um, set it by prescribing an antacid at the same time. What that does is it reduces the, the acid load on the stomach lining, giving it a chance to tolerate the prednisone. Um, all right, so we mentioned the depression. Um, all right, so that's some of the main things that people notice within a month of use and less than a year. Now let's go into a year or longer. So we're looking into the long-term use of prednisone now. One of the things you'll notice in some of these people is acne. And then because of this weight gain and fluid retention, these two phenomena here, you get something called a moon face. So a prolonged exposure actually gives a, a special looking facies, which is kind of like a rounded face with most of the features, the cheekbones, etc., washed out because of the, the increase in uh, ballooning of, of the face from both fatty deposition and fluid retention over a long space of time. Uh, some other problems is when you've been on it for a year or longer is something called adrenal suppression. So as I was telling you up above, your body also makes prednisone. But if you keep taking a super physiological amount, your body will shut down its own manufacturing of uh, this chemical. Oh, another important one I forgot to mention up here is Addison's disease, which is what, um, what was it President Kennedy had? Addison's disease. Um, so when you're coming off a of prednisone after you've been on it for a long time, what we do is we don't suddenly stop you or you'll get a, a biological crash. What we do is we gradually wean you down. So for example, say you were taking, I don't say you were on um, 20 milligrams, then we go down to say 15, then 10, then five, then one, and maybe do that over several weeks each drop. That just gives your body sufficient time to realize that there's a shift in tide and to start stepping up its own production to meet the deficit. So that's usually not that big of a deal to fix. The key thing is just letting people know if they've been on it for a long time, please don't just suddenly stop because it's not going to end up nice. Another big problem with long-term use is osteoporosis. It tends to cause thinning of the bones. And sometimes people only realize this when they have a trivial fall and suddenly realize that they got a fracture. 
what we tend to do preventatively is when we know somebody is going to need to be on prednisone for a year or longer is we'll often do um, serial bone mineral density testing. What that does is it gives us an early warning sign that there's um, thinning of their bones occurring. Again, if, the, if we can't quit the prednisone, which would solve the problem, if we can't pr uh, stop the prednisone because of one of these uh, diseases, we'll continue it. But then what we can do is prescribe something called a bisphosphonate. We'll also give them vitamin D and calcium, and that can help to correct the uh, bone mineral loss. Also, later on, when they're finished the prednisone therapy, uh, you can continue those drugs, and that will also help to lift the bone density, if not back to normal, close enough that you're not getting fractures from trivial insults. Now, another uh, serious complication with long-term use is in the eyes. It promotes both cataract formation and glaucoma. And one of the keys to um, helping prevent with that is keeping those sugars normal because that's one of the things that will help to accelerate cataracts and glaucoma. But sometimes with prednisone, you, you're basically weighing the good versus the bad. So there's no perfect solution. So say you've got, um, say you've had an episode of multiple sclerosis and you're really doing bad, you're losing neurological function. So which is worse, put up with some of these side effects or put up with the loss of your neurology. So it's not always clear cut what you should do, but in general, we try to only use the prednisone if we have to. Also in a lot of conditions, you only need it for about seven days. For example, in asthma, I've used it many times in myself for asthma, COPD exacerbation. So some of these conditions don't need to be long-term uh, prednisone solutions. Very often, it's only about a week therapy that's needed. So generally, with one week of therapy, most people don't notice very much side effects, except just feeling better in general. So ladies and gentlemen, if, um, if you're going to be on prednisone therapy, I hope this helps and gives you some solutions of how we manage some of the spin-off nuisance side effects from prednisone. Again, super effective medication on multiple domains, like it's rare to see a drug that effective in so many different conditions, it's incredible. So anyway, thank you for watching and uh, we'll be in touch again soon. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos, subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.